right then. So, new video, new season coming up. All this happening, but I ain't fishing. Main reason being, we've had a storm, or we're in a storm, everyone's been, been getting blown over and all that. So, uh, yeah, it's probably been affecting the fishing a bit, and it's a bit too nippy for me, even though Man of Steel, not really, but, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, it's, it's bad weather, I can't go out in that, especially on that lovely public transport of ours we've got in London, you know what I mean? Old King Livingston, yeah, shut your mouth. Alright? <laughs> so, uh, today I'm going to talk to you about rigs and tips. <laughs> Mainly for the carp inside of things. I know I'm going to hear a lot of groans when you hear this. But, uh, what, what can I say is popular nowadays. I might give it a go. I'm trying to aim to catch my first 20 to, uh, this year. But I'm also going to go into the pleasure side of things, obviously. Just go into the, uh, go into the float and that. On the pole, maybe. So, oh, it's all good. So, anyway. I'm going to start you off with this stuff. Alright. This is lead core. Cool. I might hear a few groans when some people hear about this. But, I'm going to give it a go this year. What I've done, I've turned this one into a helicopter rig here. As you may see, I've put a uh, one of them new fox leads on the bottom. It's uh, a tri diameter, so a tri tri square diamond or something like that. It's just basically a diamond pear shape with um, flattened edges. So it sits on the bottom if it's gravel and if it's silt, it will actually sink in the silt. So uh, I know some people don't want their lead to sink in the silt, but if you're using a helicopter rig, you can move where this swivel is here, where your hook link can go, because you've got a quick link. And uh, the two beads here trap it, as you see. You can move this bead up, as you see. And what that will do is enable the thing, the rig to move up and down. So say this goes in, you got your there, the leg goes in the silt, but it stays just there. You stay, the hook uh, link stays there, because obviously the bead has trapped it. So helicopter rigs, Good for very silty grounds. That's what you want to use if you've got... Uh, it's good for all surfaces, really. But I'm going to use a lead cord this year. Just to something new. Just like a shock leader sort of thing if I'm fishing on the gravels. And uh, try some new baits out. Give yourself some particle baits for the start of the season. Boilies are getting a bit overused now. And like, the fish are getting a bit like, wary of them, maybe. Maybe for fishing commercials or lakes that hold a lot of carp. Stick with the boilies if they're working. That's all I'm saying. But this year, on, on the lakes where they're a bit more wary, go for a particle bait maybe, like the uh, sweet corn, maybe a bit of a, I'm going to try tiger nuts this year, like, I, haven't, I haven't tried them in a while, chickpeas maybe, but uh, only small ones to start off with, because like no, apparently no nat, like what I've heard of people, like, whether it be true or not, I don't know, but no natural carp food or food uh, in that instance, in the water is either 10 mil, like 10 mil. So I've taken that into account and bought some small tiger nuts and some 10 mil boilies, which I'm going to double up basically or use as a snowman rig base, like that sort of thing. So yeah, helicopter rig, good for the silt and that. And it uh, weighs down your main line, well, weighs down this end, last bit. I've got about a metre here of it. Good stuff, highly recommend it. It seems good, I think this is the ESP stuff. Yeah, ESP stuff, and uh, just give it a go. Let me know how you're doing it. I'd like, to, like, I'd like from now on, a lot. Like, not I'm telling, not demanding, but like, it'd be nice to hear a bit of feedback on like some of your captures and that. And I'll like recommend like certain places to you, and I'll help you out if you like. So uh, you can give me a buzz, or not a buzz. You can give me an email on Ashley at tacklecheck.co.uk. It's Ashley is A S H L E Y, not the way that it's spelled for girls, and. Uh, Tackle Tech is T-A-C-K-L-E, so tackle spent not spelt normally, and tech is T-E-K. And you can check me out on www.tackletech.co.uk. And I'm also on anglistoday.co.uk, which I write a regular column for every month, but the site's under construction at the moment, so it's paper and axe, you're all moving to a different location, obviously, so yeah. I'm talking really fast, sorry. And uh, so that won't be out for a little while. But the Tackle Tech one, I've got a new one about there, where I've caught some winter carp and that in the docks. I uh, had four out on the float. Not bad, not too big. The biggest one went seven and a half. The rest were about five, five pounds. <laughs> like to throw it five pounds as well, but yeah. Leg cool, good stuff. Use it. Now, in conjunction with that, what happens, as you may know, as I'm putting this leg core back in the rig's place, oh, I'll do that later, is that when you've cast out, 
Like, this is this is basic stuff now. When you've cast out, as you know, you've got your bit of water there, your liner just go through the middle of it, and you tend to get liners and maybe spook some fish off by like, obviously seeing how visible the line actually is. Now they might say it goes invisible in the water, maybe to the human eye it does, but further down along the line, obviously if a fish bumps into it and sees it, they're gonna think, hang about, what's on the end of this? So uh, that's where these come in. These are the uh, cooler back lids. As you see here, these are about half an ounce. And what these basically do, I can demonstrate to you on the lead core bit, is you've cast out, you've sunk your line, you really take a bit of line out and you lift up the slack. You've got your slack bow line. What you do then is you reach out, obviously, you've got your slack line here, and then you basically clip on your back lead and let it just plug in the water where you want. Like this runs free running along your line, and what it does is you put it at the back end, obviously, and it goes sort of like it pins the bottom back end of your line down and the line runs along the bottom of the lake bed as opposed to going diagonally through it. And it's just basically stops line bites and gets, um, like stops the fish being too spooked by your line. Maybe if you fish lakes where well, there's wary carp, or maybe if you're fishing big, like, big pits or gravel pits or maybe big reservoirs. So yeah, bat leads, use them. And I'd also recommend, I know I'm trying to, um, it's not even anything to do with me, but this free carp DVD there, Daddy Fairbrass is one, he's going for colder. Basically he's plugging loads of like loads of brands, but he gives you some good tips in there as well. So go to your tackle shop, if they've got them in there, pick one up, they're free. It's a three hours of DVD. It's not bad, he's a funny bloke. So uh that's all good. So uh got the new season up coming up. Uh remember to get your licenses, don't wanna see no don't wanna hear no no people fishing her without a license. And uh get yourself on them lakes, get yourself out there, the spring, the carp are gonna be turning on, the fish are gonna be turning on. Maybe get on the maggot feeder, use a quiver, a nice one ounce quiver tip maybe. Uh, these are just general tips, you know. I'm just trying to think of for you. Get out there with a one ounce tip, like a small one ounce tip, go for the fine bites. Maybe ground bait feeder, small ground bait feeder or a maggot feeder. I, I prefer the maggot feeders in general because you can put ground bait in them as well as. Then uh, only a little oh, one, stinky, small camazan black cat maybe, or a small drenum one. Uh, what else could I think of? Hmm. <laughs> no, it's yeah. If you're carping, obviously, I'm thinking particle baits to the start of the spring. Get them in. Maybe you get the old bonus tench, or maybe the old. Well, you you probably start off getting tench and bream. You might get the old bonus carp, but every fish counts in my case. I ain't bothered. I like the tench. Don't mind the bream. Oh, well, saying that, there's not many bream like lakes with bream down here. So uh, some people can consider that as lucky. Some people think, mm, not very good for matches. Well, it isn't. But uh, the tench have really feeling really well at the moment. Getting the cruisers and the tench coming out to about, well, a double figure tench come out last year at the Glades at about £11, maybe. No, it was, it was just, it was probably in Spong. So I think it was just between, just nudging £10, £11. Pound. But yeah, uh, that's a lot I'm thinking of at the moment. Yeah, so get yourself either quiver tipping, float fishing on them, get them last days of the rivers in, just before the close season comes up this Saturday. Yeah, get your last days of the rivers. Have a crack at them for the chub. Big, nice, big lobworm. You might get your bonus nice perch on the way. Uh, River Thames, maybe, if you're living in Staines and that. Get out there, down to uh, Hampton Court. Perhaps some nice big barbel coming out of there. Uh, this is like for the London-based people. I'm not sure how everywhere else is going. So, yeah. Uh, it's, it's get yourself out there. If you ain't got a close season, stick to it, persist, and I'm sure you'll get the fish. It'd be nice to hear about some of your captures. <laughs> And that comment and all that, send me an email so I've told you the place. And uh, check me out on them sites. And for now, that's all I can think of. So, I probably will bid you adieu. And I hope this blooming storm pisses off. Because uh, I'm going to get out there. I should be out this Saturday. Try my hand for a couple of carp. Fingers crossed. I don't do much carping, but I'm going to get into it a bit more this year. Try to get myself a few decent captures. Well, saying that, oh, well, I don't mind anything, but I'm trying to get myself a few bigger ones. So, uh, till then, I'll bid you adieu, I'll bid you farewell, good night, goodbye, and uh, tight lines. Have a good one, Pete.